Wake Forest trying to become just the second team in ACC history to win three consecutive games against Florida State. Clemson the other. Wake Forest has that chance on Saturday. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the College Football Previews here on CBSSports.com. The Demon Deacons, 18th in the nation, going to Tallahassee to take on the 24th-ranked Seminoles. And to help me break it all down, we bring in Spencer Tillman on the phone from Houston. And, Spence, let's start with Florida State. They are 24th in the nation. But what can you really make of the offense and the defense that they've done so far because they've beaten Western Carolina and Tennessee Chattanooga? Well, it's the same thing I said about uh, Oklahoma and their win over, ironically, Tennessee Chattanooga if you can execute uh, then that's a good thing I mean I think Oklahoma had a 50 spot on UC Chattanooga in the first half and we were like you know with bated breath saying okay are they authentic are they really good well I think they showed everybody against a pretty good um, actually better competition against Washington all they were reeling a little bit as well I think you take away from this uh, the 116 points that Florida State has, has amounted in their in their first two games um, I think you take away the fact that you can execute Jimbo Fisher's offense. That's what you take away. Now comes the real test against a team that's been tested a little bit. Well, let's talk about Wake Forest because they have been tested. Uh, they won at Baylor, and oh, you could say whatever you want about the Bears, but it is a Big 12 team. Then they came home and beat a much improved Ole Miss team in a game they had to come back from. Riley Skinner, he's the quarterback. What do you know about him, and what do you know about him in big games? Well, the thing that you know about him is he's very efficient. I mean, you look at his numbers, he's absolutely incredible. And the come from behind win over Mrs. Ole Miss it was impressive. Uh, you know that the guy's at 70% on his pass completions, 32 of 43 for 267 yards and a couple of touchdowns and that come from behind win and I think the thing that I like about him is he carries himself in a way that just connotes uh, confidence and when you see a guy that by the numbers does it and also his appearance he's got that get off the bus factor about him the minute he steps off he looks the part and so uh, I think that's no reason why Jim Jim Grove there's no mystery why Jim Grove feels the way he does about his quarterback I mean you get a guy with an NFL pedigree and Jim and, and some of the assistance he has on his staff um, you're going to get good results particularly on the offensive side of the ball uh, on the other side Spence it seems like we've been saying the entire decade that Florida State's been looking for a quarterback uh, after Chris Winkie won the Heisman Trophy really it's been a search every single year now they may have two that actually may be good enough to be really good in the ACC for the Seminoles, but we'll start with the guy that's going to start the game. That's Christian Ponder. What should people look to see from him? Well, you draw the, the, the comparison between Chris Winkie. I mean, it's just the, the, the polar opposite. I mean, Chris was like 28 years of age, and, and they got efficiency with him. But this is a sophomore quarterback. I mean, Christian Ponder, along with his uh, battery mate, Vontre Richardson, together, Jason, you want to talk about how effective they are. They're one and two in the conference in efficiency. Uh, so uh, back to back, and, and 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 I think Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator of Florida State, has got a a nice uh, little floor to work with in terms of quarterback play. He can start from scratch and, and build a, a system that's going to be effective for a while to come. Now, so um, Christian is a solid guy, uh, and the backup is probably as gifted, only uh, in a different way. But Spence, they haven't seen a defense uh, like Wake Forest. I mean, let, let's be honest again. I know you said you t look at efficiency and you look at putting up the points like they did in those first two games. But Wake Forest, they turn you over, they get after you, they don't miss tackles. H how difficult is this? I know it's at home, but how difficult is this for Florida State's young players? Well, it's going to be very difficult. because First of all, they're dealing still with some players on the, on the suspension, the yep. academic issue. They've still got some issues there. And even though Jimbo Fisher, the heir apparent as head coach, uh, has got the offense clicking a little bit right now. I think there's some disturbing trends within Florida State. I was looking uh, just yesterday, for example, one kid um, at a Lincoln out there just outside of Tallahassee, you know, a defensive back named T.J. Bryant. He left and went to USC. Now, there was a time, Jason, when you would never, ever see a player that, that left the Florida State area uh, immediately, particularly from Lincoln High School, that would go anywhere other than FSU. But that's changing. So I think you've seen, along with Florida's resurgence, a lot of that, that core talent uh, going to different places other than FSU. So that's a, an aside issue, but it definitely impacts the amount of talent that's on the field, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, which is what you're going to need in this conference to differentiate yourself. Everybody can run and chase uh, on the offensive side, but you need to be able to stop that and match it with talent. So I think that's where Florida State is really at a disadvantage. And um, Wake Forest, meantime, just, just gets faster and stronger. They're outstanding. It's unbelievable to say that Wake Forest may have more talent than Florida State. We would have never said that. One note on the suspensions, Preston Parker, he will be back for this game. Uh, he's missed the last two uh, for different reasons, not mm -hmm. like the other guys who were suspended at the end of last season. Uh, Spence, take your winner.
Um, you know what? This is going to be a tough one, but I'm going to go for the upset. I mean, I know it's by the number, number 18th ranked Wake Forest isn't up an upset, but just by the, the jersey and the label and the tradition, most people would consider it that. I'm thinking Wake Forest continues to roll, Jason, then gets a six-point decision. Well, two years ago, they went into Doak Campbell Stadium and handed Bobby Bowden his first ever home shutout loss in his 33 years at Florida State. We'll see if they go in there and get another win. Spencer, thank you very much, sir. All right, sir. We'll talk to you, Jason. And you can look for Spencer Saturday on College Football Today, beginning at 3 o'clock on CBS. And, of course, for more on this game or any other heading into the weekend, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.